Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. This video is going to be a little more personal and a little more somber than usual. Recently, a friend of mine passed away after a long battle with leukemia. In his memory, I've decided to make a video on cancer, what it is and how it can be treated. Cancer is the result of uncontrolled cell growth. The cells in your body are constantly dividing in two to make new cells. If this were to continue uncontrolled, you would quickly expand into a huge blob person. To avoid this, certain cells are programmed to die after a set amount of time. You lose tens of billions of cells every day, and this is perfectly normal. When the cellular machinery that controls this off switch stops working, that cell doesn't die. Instead, it just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing into cells that also lack this programmed off switch. When enough of these cells build up together, it can form a mass. That's what a tumor is. The actual causes of cancer are many and varied, and the mechanism by which they're triggered is quite complex, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail. Everything I'm going to say will be very general. There will probably be specific exceptions to every point I'm going to make here. I'm not setting out to do an exhaustive study, but rather give a broad overview of the topic. For most cancers, that uncontrolled growth is triggered when something, it could be a substance, it could be some form of radiation, it could even be a virus, damages the DNA in a cell in the body. DNA controls basically all of the biochemical processes of the cell. And if some aspect of that biochemical machinery is damaged, the cell usually just dies. However, if that off switch, which is also controlled by the DNA, is the only thing damaged, the cell then just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing into more and more cells. In some cases, that DNA damage is hereditary, that is, it comes from the parents. But for most cancers, the trigger is external. Once the tumor starts growing, it needs resources. And because it grows so fast, it needs a lot of them. It's basically hogging all of the nutrients that would otherwise go to healthy cells. It's behaving as a parasite, and this is what causes some of the symptoms of cancer, like fatigue or weight loss. As it grows, it starts to affect the area around it. It can interfere with blood flow, or breathing, or eating, or digestion, depending on where it's located. And if it presses on a nerve, that's what can cause pain. If the tumor stayed where it was, it wouldn't be too bad, but it can undergo a process called metastasis. This is where a piece of the tumor, and it could be only a few cells, breaks off and travels through the bloodstream to lodge in a new place. This is what happened to Terry Fox. Terry is a Canadian icon. He had a tumor in his knee, and as a result, his leg was amputated. He decided to run across Canada on a prosthetic leg to raise money for cancer research. However, he only made it halfway across when the tumor reappeared in his lungs. He was forced to abandon the run and died less than a year later. Ever since then, every year, there have been Terry Fox runs held all across Canada to raise money for cancer research. People talk about finding the cure for cancer as if it were the holy grail of scientific research. However, because there are so many different types of cancers and so many causes, it's impossible to find a cure for all of them. And because of the possibility of recurrence, cancer isn't cured so much as treated and survived. The treatment most people are familiar with is chemotherapy. That's exactly what it sounds like, therapy with chemicals or rather drugs. These drugs are administered for the express purpose of killing cancer cells. However, because cancer cells are so similar to regular body cells, it's almost impossible to target them specifically. There's collateral damage. A lot of non-cancerous healthy cells are killed, including the cells and hair follicles. That's why cancer patients lose their hair. It's a side effect of the treatment. Another treatment is radiation. This may sound odd, because radiation was one of the causes of cancer. However, remember that radiation damages DNA. And the damage that caused the tumor in the first place was that off switch. 
If it's damaged once, it can't be damaged again. So the radiation can't make it worse. The idea is to damage the other cellular machinery in the tumor and kill it. There is a risk of the radiation creating new tumors from healthy cells, which is why great care is taken in the application of the radiation. Both of these treatments have some pretty severe side effects. Recently, a newer, less unpleasant treatment has been developed, but it's only really applicable to cancers near the surface of the body. It's called photodynamic therapy, or PDT, and it works like this. The patient is given a drug that can absorb photons. The absorption of light is something of a running theme in my videos. Because of the way cancers hog nutrients, the drug builds up in the cancer faster than it does in normal cells. And you reach a useful dose of the drug in cancer cells first. When you reach this stage, a laser is shot into the tumor. This is why it's only really applicable to things near the surface. The drug absorbs the energy of the laser and uses it to convert normal oxygen, which is present in every cell in the body, into something called singlet oxygen. Singlet oxygen is the chemical equivalent of the Looney Tunes Tasmanian Devil. It absolutely rips everything to shreds, and it destroys the tumor from the inside out. After the treatment, the patient sits in a dark room for two or three hours while the drug is flushed from the body. Otherwise, they would get a severe sunburn as soon as they went outside. Some people try alternative medical treatments. Alternative medicine isn't medicine. It's little more than snake oil. At best, these treatments do nothing. But the real danger lies in not seeking proper medical care. <clears throat> Some people try alternative medical treatments. Alternative medicine is not medicine. It's little more than snake oil. At best, these treatments do nothing. But the real danger lies in not seeking proper medical care. If someone you care about has cancer, the worst thing you can do is advise them to seek alternative treatments. You're just killing them that much faster. I understand that chemo and radiation are unpleasant and it's hard to watch them suffer. But if you really want to help, fundraise for new treatments with fewer side effects. That's cancer in a nutshell. It's an insidious disease that involves your own body turning against you. It can strike anyone. Three members of my family are cancer survivors. There are treatments, but they can always be improved. If you want to help fight it, I've linked to the Canadian Cancer Society in the description. They will always take donations. And if anyone wants to suggest an equivalent organization in your own home country, I will link to that too. Thank you for watching. I've been Steve.